we're backstage with Jean-Yves Thibaudet. The 40s were such a busy time for Bernstein. He was conducting, he was composing with his first symphony. He was also playing the piano and he was also um, teaching. I mean, he just, he was one, one of the unique, I mean, a completely unique character, person, talent, genius in every way. I mean, unbelievable. And he also seemed to be exploring the relationship between different kinds of art. So he takes this poem and, and does this piece of music and his ballet, Fancy Free becomes a musical on Broadway. He seemed to use music to connect to all parts of life. Yeah, I love that idea. I mean, I think we had that, I think, at the turn of the century. I mean, 1900, 1910, 1920s, specifically in Paris. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, it was a golden period where you had exactly that. Where you had the music, you had the ballet, the ballet russe, you know, and Stravinsky and Ravel. Then you had the painters and the writer and Cocteau. And I mean, they were all working together, doing projects together, and all those groups that were meeting, those cafes in Paris and uh, Saint Germain. And I think this is sometimes a little bit lost because we all are so busy now. We have our lives and we just jump from one plane to another to perform somewhere else. And we don't really stay anymore in a place enough to go late at night and have those discussions around a drink with other colleagues who do something different sometimes and just exchange our views on arts of all the things. I think that's so fascinating, so enriching for each of us. And I think I miss that sometimes. There was one place where I felt that was still completely alive was the Spoleto Festival in Italy. And I was very lucky to know Giancarlo Minotti very well. He was like almost, I feel like a grandfather to me because I was very young and I was very close to him until he passed. And I think Giancarlo was a genius in the way that Bernstein was, one of those incredible personas that just had that charisma that whatever he touched, he made something incredible. And that festival was really that. And actually, Bernstein came a few times. I think he really enjoyed it. It was just a place where we would meet in the piazza after, at the end of everything. At 2, 3 a.m., we'd be all there with dancers, painters, actors. I mean, everybody was there, and we were discussing and laughing. And, and that's so great. And I think this is exactly what you're saying, what Bernstein was after. Uh, in, the, in this time. So do you have any other thoughts on Bernstein's significance? You say you didn't meet him, but he certainly must have influenced you in some oh, way. Completely. I mean, you know, in an indirect way because I didn't meet him, but definitely. I mean, I've watched so many of his videos when he talks, when he when he presents things, when he talks to the, the young, you know, things. You we know, in New York, of course, but all of them, I mean, all the things from Harvard and I read some of it. It's just fascinating. I mean, how can one human being have so much talent and, and give so much and it's just he must just have been such an incredible person to be near to well and you also explore different kinds of music off the classical concert stage you, you've done jazz and you've performed soundtracks to movies oh absolutely i mean i need that diversity and i'm a very curious person and i in my way i mean you know i don't compose or i don't do lots of other things but in my way i think I do lots of things for you know for as, as much as a pianist can do. I like play chamber music. I played for singers, as you said. I've done a few jazz uh, trips, <laughs> and also soundtrack. Yeah, I'm fascinated by soundtracks. I live in Los Angeles for many years now, and and the movie industry, of course, we're all fascinated somehow by it. But I think the relation between the movie and the music is something that is incredible that people sometimes don't realize. But I think half of the movie is the music. I mean, if you see when you see the movie without the music, and when you add the music, that suddenly it becomes alive. So I have the most you know, incredible respect for the composers. I think sometimes the composers for the movies are, are a little bit looked up like, like second-class citizens. You know, it's like you have the composer and then the soundtrack. Like they're not really, they, they're not really composers. You know? And I think that's so ridiculous. And I think some people like Bernstein, I and mean, in those days Prokofiev, Shostakovich, Kornel, everybody was writing for the movie. There's nothing wrong with that. And some of those composers are absolutely phenomenal composers and I have the greatest admiration for them and that's why I love to work with them and when I have an opportunity to do be part of a soundtrack is great fun for me. How do you enjoy touring with an orchestra? When I tour my problem is that it's always too short because we go to all those fantastic towns but we don't stay there. We come in, we rehearse, we play, and we go. It's very rare that we can stay even an extra day. and So it's sometimes a little bit frustrating, but still. I said I've been lucky to come quite a few places to, to Israel and to Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and Haifa. And I have to say that it's a unique experience in your life. There's no other place like, like Israel. Um, there really isn't. And when you go specifically, when you go to Jerusalem, there is a, a power there, an intensity, a spirituality, which is beyond all religion. And this is what I like about it. But there's so many problems in the world. It always has to go with religions, and there's always so many wars about that. But when you go there, you feel like they all come to a meeting point where it's all started, whatever you want to believe. But you feel that. There's something so incredible in Jerusalem, so powerful. And every time I've been there, 
it feels good. I mean, I, I think people who haven't been there should really go there because it's a feeling that you don't feel anywhere else in the world. And the audience is absolutely incredible. I mean, there's a love, appreciation of music and tradition of music that is at a level that it's very rare to encounter anywhere in the world. And of course, you know, the relation they had and the legacy that Bernstein left there, of course, will make a big difference. And I think being here with this piece, it's powerful. You mentioned the fact that there are so many problems in the world, but Jerusalem is so important to so many different cultures. Does music play a role in healing some of those problems that exist? Absolutely. I think music is one of the few things that are left in this world that, first of all, is apolitical. You know, there's no party. You can just, music is just music. There's no religion. It's like the most universal language that you can really share with everybody. You know, we can go anywhere. In the middle of the forest in Africa, you can play. That's what is amazing. And also what is amazing that people will react and benefit from it, even if they don't know anything about music. And actually, I think those are the most interesting people, those who don't know anything about our music, and see how they, what it does to them. And that's when you realize that music is so powerful. It also helps heal people. I mean, even medically, it's been proven that it helps in a lot of different things. For me, the most beautiful compliment is somebody that will come to you after the concert and say, I'm going through a really hard time in my life right now. I lost you know, my wife or my mother is very ill, whatever it is. And for two hours, I just forgot about everything. You give me, you know, thank you so much because you made me forget about everything. And so you're able to take people to a different place, a better place, at least for the time of the concert. Music just, it's like an evasion. And I think that's what we need. And I think that's why in, in hard times, I think lots of people, even if they can't afford, I think there's a lot of things they will cut down on, but I think going, the arts, I think is one of the things that you have to go and will always be there. But I think that's one of the only things left where you can really lift your spirit and forget about everything for the time of the concert and just enjoy the music and, and see what it does to you. It's so wonderful.